respect to other things. So it's always about relationship to other things. It may well be that co that consciousness is the way things feel from the inside. That but you mean even an electron? Is this is this even an electron? Be, I, mean, has I don't a know. It may well be that it feels like something to be an electron. Let's yeah, say okay. that. Um, yeah. I bet it sucks. <laughs> Hey, the, know, so you can only spin, you know, the, one half. There are all those cute protons to hang out with in the, in the, yeah. in the nucleus. <laughs> Attraction. You're I mean, everywhere. The no, world is a stranger thing that yeah. we, than we like to believe. Right? We constantly discover weird things in the universe. So maybe that's the way the universe is. So, How so, do we know? So but, but, physi but physics basically is telling us about the measurable aspects of these things. And one thing we know about consciousness is it's really hard to measure. So I can measure, say, Christoph's behavior directly in a scientific way. I can't measure his consciousness directly in a scientific way. So if there is consciousness at the fundamental level of matter, we should expect it's like that too. There'll be some directly measurable features like mass and spin and charge that we measure by their impact on other systems and on us. But consciousness you know, remains subjective, so it remains something we can only get at indirectly, and that's what I makes it hard. I actually think Christoph thinks there is a way to measure consciousness, but I want to pause on that for a second, because I would like to come to that in a little bit. But I just want to ask, would you describe this as panpsychism? And if so, can you explain why it's bad for news for vegetarians? Well, uh, yeah, panpsychism is the thesis that <laughs> there's mind everywhere. Pan means all, psych means mind, so all mind. So it's not just we have minds, uh, dogs have minds, Mice have minds, flies have minds, bacteria have minds, even electrons and protons have mind. And it's a venerable view in philosophy. I don't know whether this view is right, but I do think it's a view that we have to take very seriously. It, it integrates mind into nature in a very deep way. I mean, it does, it does affect your ethical views. I used to think that I should not eat anything which was conscious or that had ever been, been conscious. So um, you know, maybe that would, you'd think that would speak in favor, say, of a vegetarian diet because, you know, um, cows and fish and so on have been, have been conscious. But once you find yourself sympathetic to panpsychism, suddenly you're going to go very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you start, you, know, you start thinking that maybe it's not like the presence of consciousness or not that, that matters and say whether you're going to eat something or not, but rather the kind of consciousness or the character of consciousness or the way it's organized. There's something very distinctive about human consciousness. We've got very rich and complex uh, intelligent consciousness. And I, I don't think anyone's going to say that a photon or an electron has the kind of stream of consciousness that we have, but people are taking seriously the idea there's at least a glimmer there. Now, Christoph, I... Certainly I all the evidence from biology, every single evidence mm -hmm. from, the, from biology suggests that consciousness is very widespread. So I have an institute where I have 300 people working on mouse and visual and, and human cortex. We recently did this experiment for all the 300 anatomist physiologists. I showed them side by side a mouse nerve cell, from the cortex and a human, and I removed the scale bar. And once you remove the scale bar, it looks almost completely identical. The hardware is the same. We have a thousand times more hardware, but otherwise it's the same. If you look at the complexity, if you look at the genome, if you look at the synapses, it's very, very similar. It's not identical, but it's very, very similar. And so we know from biology, it goes down to very lowly creatures. So do you call that panpsychism mm -hmm. or not? But certainly, the capability to have experience extends widely into the animal kingdom. Darwin didn't believe there was going to be a sharp threshold, did he, between That's our correct. us and... His last book that he wrote before he died was to study the lowly earthworm. And he writes very explicit, there's no Rubicon on the one side of which are uh, uh, non-sentient, on the other side they're sentient, here they're simple, here they're complex animal. He emphasized, and of course all biologists do, the great continuity across all animal species. Now, if we take this, though, to its extreme, that even a neuron as an individual cell is conscious. No. You do not take this. No. So that's, that's so a you, very your different question. Your panpsychism doesn't that, go no, all no, the way. No, no, that has to do with the relationship of the parts to the whole. Okay. My individual br brain cell, he, right now, if I pick out one right. brain cell, like you can do neurosurgery, that's not conscious by itself. But mm -hmm. you assemble 16 billion into cortex, and then you get a conscious that then you get me, a conscious creature. Now, mm -hmm. in a different animal, like a, like a mouse that only has 14 million in its cortex, again, that's conscious, but not the individual element. Conscience exists at a particular, it has to do, once again, with the relationship of the whole to the uh, to the Just to get this right, you're saying electrons are conscious and brains are conscious, but neurons are not. Yeah, so what's wrong with neurons? Skip, it skips the middle. What did the neuron do? Because they are part of a whole. Electrons are part of the Wait, whole. is this the idea that you suppress no, no, they, 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 it says that, for instance, Dave and I, all three of us are conscious. 
I posit there's no evidence for transpersonal, for group consciousness. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Is, oh. There is us three individuals. Okay. We clearly interact. You know, we talk and exchange information. But there's nothing what it feels like to be Jana, Christoph, uh, Something it feels like to be Pioneer Works people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do we have a collective... Uh, as, as a collective group of people here, is there a consciousness that emerges that we're unaware of as the neuron is unaware of there's your no, consciousness? There's no evidence. There's collective behavior. There's no question. We can do the wave. We can laugh mm -hmm. together. We can do all sorts of things. There's no I mean, if you watch, you know, Korean, if you ever go into, you know, watching Korean uh, military parades from North Korea, you mm -hmm. see, a, you know, a million people doing these highly pre uh, precise um, synchronized movements together. But there is nothing what it feels like to be 100, there's nothing what it feels like to be 310 million Americans. But some the, complex systems do give you consciousness, brains, namely. So when wait, these so David, particles are assembled so this has into to a do brain, you get conscious. And we don't know what other systems this extends to, you know. Wait, so David, do you disagree? You think it's conceivable that there's a consciousness emerging from the collective of the people in the room? Well, that would be amazing. I don't know that that's true. But, <laughs> you know, I don't rule it out, and I think it's, uh, it's something we should at least no evidence take for seriously. <laughs> and, yeah, there's no, yeah and, and we've got all that evidence that electrons are conscious. <laughs> no, and um, I never, no, but I didn't yeah. see it. Like we're, no. we're, we're, we're all going beyond the evidence here. First, first things first. This is a lot of speculation, people. None mm. of this is uh, no. none of this is accepted, is consensus accepted science. We don't know the correct theory of consciousness, and we don't know where consciousness is to be found. But we do know consciousness is present in no. some complex systems, and we don't know the conditions under which it arises. We believe it arises in some other complex systems besides human brains, including animal brains, mm -hmm. and so on. And it's at least an open question that it might be present in some relatively simple complex systems as well as some extremely complex complex Christoph, systems like I can society. Tell you're, you're anxious to reply. Well, because, because this is, I mean, there are certain, the only, we can go back to Rene Descartes, the only thing I'm certain of is my own consciousness. I don't know whether Dave and Jana or any of you are conscious. Now, I assume you are, because why? You behave similar to me. If you come to my lab, I put you in a scanner, you have a brain, your responses are very similar, etc., etc. With a baby, now I can't talk to a baby, but I can do indirect experiments. My dog, why do I believe it's conscious? It has a brain very similar to mine. If I take a little, chew, a little quinona grain of, of dog brain and human brain, only a very few expert anatomists can distinguish it. And its behavior leads me, and its behavior and its hardware lead me to conclude that, that it's conscious. That is inferential reasoning. That's perfectly reasonable. It's, you can do it Bayesian uh, formulation, it's reasonable, it's rational, it's not a pure speculation. It's as much speculation as me assuming that Dave here is conscious. <laughs> Was that a jab? I, I, I don't know, you know, I have my moments. The consciousness kind of jumps in and out sometimes. If we're looking at collective behaviors, you have to ask things like, is the left half of the room itself definable as an entity that is conscious? or?